thanks for the very liberal introduction and i think today we are in an age and time where uh, horizon of uh, knowledge and uh, practice is growing exponentially and that is all the more reason for all of us to get engaged in the nature of conferences and practice which you have been talking about so for uh, first and foremost i thank uh, uh, dr ranjit kumar singh for having given me the opportunity and honor to address the iasr international conference on forensic science 2022 on this particular topic and this is a topic which is slowly becoming of rage how i get involved in the forensic world i am i'm still not uh, aware but i have been i don't come from the forensic sciences but i have been engaged with the forensic world for quite some time and might be somewhere uh, five six seven years back i was pulled by rashtriya raksha university and then uh, karnataka forensic science laboratory took a couple of lectures and that is how we are moving in this particular area and when dr ranjit kumar singh asked me about delivering a lecture i thought that metaverse is one area which generally is untouched and people who are talking about it primarily are into i think only the very superficial part of it so though we are getting into metaverse today let me at the very outset make it very very clear to you that we are at a nascent stage and being in this nascent stage i will not be able to give you a complete por portfolio of digital crimes which which are which would happen or likely to happen if and when as and when the metaverse comes into existence but we have all gone through web 1.0 and web web, web 2.0 and when we are going through uh, basically a conjunction of web 3.0 and metaverse how things will be like we have been living in this world for around 25 30 years of the digital world and last two two and a half years it has been a completely uh, digital immersion age so broadly we understand what it is all about we will slowly move into the topic so i think all of you can see right yes sir fine yeah so this is digital crimes in the metaverse ecosystem is primarily setting the stage for metaverse itself and if you are able to understand the metaverse you will also understand the perimeters of crime you will also understand the ingredients of it and how complicated or how easy it is to get into this and get out of it and as i was introduced so i am the founder director of techcon pro private limited uh, our only job is to create technology solutions we are neither into body shopping or products or services we bring something of a totally different nature to this country i will not delve it on on it any further so where where do we start from so as my role model uh steve jobs so when he started with his career he used to talk about things which nobody could imagine and this it was said that he has a distorted reality field by the time he left the earth i think his distorted reality field had become reality and our physical and uh, understanding of reality had become completely distorted because our world had completely changed primarily what was called as dystopia in 1992 when this uh, metaverse sort of a a uh, thought process came into existence uh, that dystopia i think uh, even uh, is becoming the reality and i feel that even it is going beyond uh, science fiction so in the technological age there is forensics in everything as the backdrop of this conference the main theme of this conference is forensics so we have to keep that totality of the picture at the back of our mind and how you people as forensic scientists would take uh, metaverse as a challenge and uh, create a competence which which we commensurate enough to handle those exponential changes as we move further so what what is this metaverse so most important is what is metaverse if we if we understand metaverse i think then we will be able to understand most of the things which we are talking about so metaverse primarily in very simple terms is creating a digital virtual universe it might not be the replication of the physical universe nonetheless there is a very very serious connect and you as a individual and a physical human being so you don't go there as a physical human going a human being your avatar goes might be it's one and uh, one and the same thing avatar which you call in hindi so that has become avatar now and that avatar is the interactive persona of the metaverse meta is beyond and verse comes from universe so it is beyond universe it is going to create something which none of us has visualized and the nearest which you can get into right now are the wide variety of video games they have been in this state for i think decades together and it is from there where this whole concept of metaverse come into existence 
this is the PPT is not moving. Uh, just one second. We are on the. Uh, we can see the third uh, slide, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is not moving. So I'll just share again. Yes, now it's fine. So this is the avatar. So avatar is your transactional persona in the metaverse. So in very simple language, and how do you get into the metaverse? This is the way you get into the metaverse, where you have IV, VR, and all sorts of stuff. And there you get into this virtual reality. You have a virtual reality. You have an extended reality. You have literally anything and everything by which you are taken into a totally different world. So... So we will we will move further as we are talking about. So where does this whole thing come from? And today, uh, your uh, Facebook and WhatsApp, that whole company has become meta. And the general understanding of most of these IT behemoths says that they will be in a position to create something which will be of lasting value and which will deliver them windfall profits as they move further as the first phase of internet gave to them only on the basis of the information or the information platform which was created by the internet and the second phase of the internet gave them through social media and variety of other things by which they were able to make companies which are worth billions and billions of dollars and also gain unassailable control over both data and also uh, the money which was generated out of it and so we are getting into horizon worlds which is a meta world so from where does the metaverse come from? So it comes from 1992, Snow Crash Fiction Model is a portmanteau of meta and universe, as we have been talking about, the avatars are the extension of the physical world. But let's understand one thing. As uh, information on internet was not replication of the internet, uh, replication of information in the physical world, the ease, the capability to collaborate, the capability to bring information together, the pace, the pace of communication, pace of collation. I think that changed the whole concept of information to a totally different level and the capability of that information being available with you or 24-7, 365 changed the way we have been treating information in the last 20-25 uh, years. Calling it a sheer replication is naive. So our experience has been very different with the two levels of uh, internet which we have faced 1.0 and 2.0 and the 3.0 which metaverse the part would be radically different and we have been seeing how this whole concept has been coming up because most of most of us are not into video games otherwise you get into roblox epic games there are variety and variety of things where the physical augmented and virtual they come into a perfect fusion when you talk of experience I think if you have seen those 3D movies and variety of other things, if you have got into Metaverse even once, you will realize might be the experience which you go through because of the aid of these gadgets might be it is better than the phys physical experience itself. As far as your conferencing, as far as moving, shopping, variety of things which we are talking about. And until you get into that experience, you will never realize and you will never be able to, you will never be able to or be ready to accept that this sort of an experience might be more addictive, more catchy, more useful, uh, more worthwhile than the physical experience itself. But suffice to say that physical will remain physical and this will be an extended arm and our life will be an integration of both these virtual and physical into one single life reality, into one single worldview. So it will be a living and breathing experience unlike we have our Zoom meetings and variety of other meetings. It will be a totally different sort of experience where you feel that you're physically moving into that space and you can transact, you can move all around the place, you can meet your friends, you can visit places, you can buy things. And the possibilities are unending. It's beyond our imagination. We will know only as it opens up. The biggest issue is that people of our age or might be even much younger, 15, 20 years younger than me, they also not be very, very much enamored by this metaverse. But when you're talking of illegal, when you're talking of instant gratification, instant services in the age of, say, from Uber to Amazon to variety of other things, 
in the age of where services are there at the click of the mouse now this the gen z as they call it the generation next this is the millennials so they are not there to wait for all these conveniences they need the conveniences in the manner which is being provided in the present uh, web 2.0 so beyond that and they also want the conveniences and they also need the controls as well so as we move further metaverse is supposed to be on blockchain on a distributed ledger giving you a totally different set of control as far as data is concerned and ownership of variety of things are concerned and this big it behemoth it is thought that they they will have lesser control as we move further we don't know whether actually that will happen or not so these are the seven layers of the metaverse so from infrastructure human interface decentralization spatial technology now spatial technology becomes extremely important that is what, where your ar vr um, and extended reality everything is out there so there is nothing which does not have a geographical context geographical context has been becoming more and more important so one is the geographical context second is the experience and third is a very high level of 3d and a sensational experience so that will pull the metaverse a metaverse is a collaboration of these technologies end to end this i am stating for the simple fact to make you clear about the complexity of technology and how difficult it will be to investigate or to get into cyber forensics or might be in a very short time we will have a new new term which would be metaverse forensics so this is to give you an idea as to the world which we are getting in as far as the technology is concerned if you get into amazon or get into any of the shopping things the experience which you have i don't think there is any experience you order you pay the convenience is there but as we move further and if you are if you were to shop in the metaverse the experience which which you would get might be is as good as the physical experience and couple of times because of the intricacies and the technical enablement to understand that particular product which you are buying that might be even much better or certainly will be much more detailed and much more satisfying walmart is already there on the metaverse so if people say that okay we are not moving in the direction of metaverse and it is a hype and might be it will never happen so for them for the detractors i can say that walmart so that story is already in metaverse the price of the item selected would automatically debited from all, all your walmart account and the stuff would be delivered so the physical and the meta the universe the physical universe in the metaverse so both are connected from day one last year the italian luxury brand gucci partnered with roblox and on gaming gaming platform to offer digital only limited edition of gucci collection digital only so their assets being created which are digital only you can also think of the land being bought in the metaverse as we move further i'll explain all those things also experiences transactions and commerce so this is the whole game plan bringing experiences to life say like banking now you have the south korean kukmin bank they have already started on the metaverse so this is the direction in which the world is going how far how fast how well it will go depends on the experience which is being created depends on the investment which is being made depends on the capability of technology adoption depends on the sanity we bring into the metaverse and not make it as a digital jungle raj it cannot become a bitcoin of the earlier days or a bitcoin which is the underbelly of money laundering today or a bitcoin of variety of other things which all of you know and we have been facing that music for quite some time now how does this help us in other variety of ways so there is something called a digital twin so digital twin is a twin which is for manufacturing processes and might be other processes as well where it is the next stage of simulation so as you progress on that mechanical process or that technical process it can be brought alive where that research development correction improvement can be brought about at a dynamic level simultaneous with the physical operations which are happening and this is different from simulation but still there are linkages how it is different from simulation i'll tell you as we move further in simple in simple terms it is a virtual model of accurately reflect physical object but it is different in the sense that there is a two way data flow and because of the two way data flow 
you are able to improve on the system before you actually get into production. Now, you one example, BMW is using NVIDIA's Omniverse platform to build digital twins for 31 different factories. So things are already, have already started happening in the metaverse. People who take the lead, the first adopters, the first movers, they will have an advantage. And you can very well see from the uh, Internet 1.0 to Internet 2.0, you are seeing people who have taken the first mover advantage, whether it's Yahoo or Google or Facebook or whichever company it might be, it can be even individuals who have practiced in a great way. They have got the first mover advantage and they have been able to move to a totally different direction. How is this digital twin different from a simulation? Simulation is a one-way process. Virtual model has a two-way flow of information. Moving ahead of simulation, the data is being ingested, is better, constantly updated, and relates to a wide range of areas. So that is how you keep on improving. And any data which comes out of normal operations is dynamic and real-time, is a data which has integrity and which has value which is proven by all sorts of companies currently into billions of dollars and controlling the world. And they're not more than five, seven companies which are literally controlling the world today. So it's a different, fully interactional system which we are getting into. And this is the manufacturing, primarily the manufacturing side of the metaverse. What are we trying to do in the metaverse? How, do, how, it is, how is it? completely different from the pillars of the current day digital universe. And there has been a huge amount of research. And this is one of the research papers which has been brought to the public domain by Accenture. So there, you, the individual becomes at the center of the universe. Unlike companies being at the center of the universe or might be governments at the center of the universe, the individual becomes the center of the universe. The internet is being reimagined as metaverse and web 3 first transform. The underpinning of this whole changing the operation. And then the whole world become programmable. So literally anything and everything can be programmed, inclusive the physical stuff. And the third is where unreal and synthetic will not be one and the same. Synthetic can be authentic and synthetic data can be more authentic. Today, we have large number of algorithmic bias. There will be large number of software bias. All emanates out of the data and what the machine learning has learned from that data. The real world is not clean, objective, and empirical. And if the real world is not clean, objective, and empirical, in reality, anything which moves virtually over it, whether it is algorithm or a software, anything connected with, the, with that data which is available with us, might create immense amount of problems and today large number of algorithms are facing those issues and next and most important is computing the impossible so new machines new possibilities quantum computing and different sorts of computing which will be able to solve issues way beyond what you and me would have imagined of so it will be a unified digital experience which all of us know that it will be unified digital experience now, how will the data be treated? At the end of the day, at the end of a digital crime, cyber crime, whatever you call it, the theft is of data. It all depends on the ownership of data. It depends on access of data. It depends on classification of data. It depends on which sort of a zoning you have done for that data. And it depends on the nature of uh, security which you have provided for the data. Correct. Now, data which will emanate out of metaverse should be, or it is presumed to be, or it is likely to be of established provenance, veracity, and value. The origin, the genesis, the veracity, and the value. So that would come into the internet fold, which is not there today, as all of us know. So trust will become an integral part of the web as we move further. And it will let you own a pair of digital tools or securely authenticate your identities. And the success of Metaverse would depend on your capability to control, capability to own your digital assets, 
or your digital persona and your capability to authenticate your identity and your capability to secure your identity. Because as we move further, we will realize that there are lots of issues which are already happening. So convergence of metaverse with Web3 or Web3 with metaverse, so that will do the real magic and should have an underlying data foundation. The data foundation will be there, how strong it is and which way it can guarantee trust, safety and choice. It should not guarantee monopolies. Digital monopolies, I think, are the biggest enemy to literally the individual, democratic societies and even nation states. How will, how will we make it happen? Now, when we are moving into a different world, the skills required are different. The nature of funds required are different. The governance, governance mechanisms which will come in place, if ever it does, that would be radically different. So you are moving into clouds app with microservices. So the skills, what skills do you require? 3D artists, game designers, multiple blockchain, its relationship, and it goes on and on. So it will be a digital world. It will be a virtual world, but it will be totally different from our current day digital world. It will be now we are uh, coming to experience the tectonic shifts in the digital world itself. The history of data proves that it works for the data powerful. If the history of data proves that it works for the data powerful, will we see a bunch of companies like Google's and Facebook's and Amazon in metaverse itself? And if we go by what Facebook has done by changing its name to Meta, what uh, Microsoft intends to with Mesh, and all these big companies trying to create, say, Decentraland or Horizon World, I think they have a very clear-cut idea that business henceforth would be in the metaverse in a big, big way. And they have the capability to define, dictate, and direct our future. And the nature of decentralization and democratic digital existence, which we are talking about, which will we suppose will be ushered in with Web, uh, web 3.0 might not be the likely future. In the same manner, democratization of data, social interaction, social collaboration, bringing the world together, making it one single community was the aim behind social media. Where social media has reached today, it is left for you and me to comment upon. And as this metaverse came into existence, I think there is the first case of a, of a metaverse rape. And here, uh, this lady by name Nina Jane Patel, she got, gets into the Horizon uh, venue platform. And within 60 seconds, there are three, four of these guys who start chasing her. They essentially, but virtually gangrate my avatar and took photos I tried to get away. So this is what she has expressed and she was completely shattered. And the people who think that the virtual is different from the real, immersive technologies and metaverse will bring those things as close as possible and might be it will be a one single uh, integration of physical and virtual existence and what she says my physiological and psychological response was though it happened in reality so this is from the victim of one of the first crimes on metaverse and uh, this is a very uh, you can call it as a grim reminder of whatever has been happening in the current day universe, in the current day internet and uh, uh, web 2.0, and what is likely to happen if we allow metaverse to grow up as a jungle, as we have allowed the digital world to grow up as a jungle in the last 25, 30 years. Again, the same thing. The metaverse has a groping problem already. So women were sexually harassed on metas via social platform. So she is not the first and she won't be the last. Now the whole Nature is that if you've not been able to provide protection to women or variety of other crimes, not only limited to women in the physical world, well, will we be ever be able to control in a virtual where policing in the virtual world is extremely difficult and policing in a metaverse would be even a much bigger, complex, monumental challenge. So according to Meta on November 26, a better uh, beta tester 
reported something deeply disturbing. She had been groped by a stranger on Horizon World. On December 1, Meta revealed that she'd posted her experience on in the Horizon World beta testing group on Facebook. So this is where we are. Are we getting into a new area of criminality, which we can call as meta criminality? We can call meta criminals and we can call meta crimes. What has been our comfort level with the digital crimes? What has been our capability to investigate digital crimes? What has been our capability to convict or get convictions in digital crime investigation? I think we started in the year 2001, first cybercrime police station in Karnataka. And I think the first conviction which we got would be in the year 2015 or 16 or 14, if I'm not mistaken. And if you go by the conviction rate of the Information Technology Act crimes, more often than not, you find the same crimes being convicted in IPC sections rather than IT Act sections. So the teeth which IT Act provides is one issue. The capability of investigation is other issue. The capability of a digital process to support that investigation is a third issue. The next issue is the way we take through the trial and the way our whole judicial system and process is made. Though the laws have been changed to support this sort of a uh, this sort of a trial, but I think that physical uh, hang-up which we have, I don't think we have been able to get across that, and we have not been able to create an ecosystem wherein we can uh, very confidently say <coughs> that we run a digital process end to end. So these are the real people. We are the real people. When we are the real people, the way we are treating, being, being treated is like digital guinea pigs. Now, these two ladies, the examples which I have shown you right now. Now, these two ladies, there was a, a reply from Meta saying that we are learning, we are improving upon it. Can this learning and improvement happen on in an open human laboratory? We have faced huge amount of music. In this open laboratory, if you go, go into the uh, movie called The Social Dilemma, you will realize how we are being treated. And it cannot graduate to a next level where we become permanent digital guinea pigs. Correct. So metaverse needs to happen if you are able to control the crime in metaverse or if you plan to or intend to. It has to grow up in a totally different manner. What all will it impact? What all does the virtual world impact today? What is cyber physical? There is only a case which is running for last one week in a, in a, in a, in a hospital outside of France. It is a 1,000 bed hospital. It has been attacked by ransomware and the, the hospital is literally on its knees. They are, but for some amount of counseling, they are not able to take care of any of their healthcare responsibilities. $10 million is the ransom which is being asked for. The hospital director, around five, six days back, he said that he will not be paying the ransom. But the way things are going, we have absolutely no idea whether that ransom will be paid or not. So cyber physical has become one, one single component of our existence. And ransomware gangs control things even say uh, our, our pipelines, colonial pipelines, then the biggest uh, meat company in the world, uh, GBS, all these things have been happening. We will not get into what is happening, uh, criminality in the digital world as it stands today. We will try and project what would be the likely uh, event of things or the scheme of things which might happen in, when we move on to the next level of cyber crimes, whether you call it a metaverse crime, you call digital crimes in the metaverse, you call it cyber crimes, cyber crimes will go to the next level and it will be an exponential one. In the physical world, if you were to even 30, 40, 50 crores of rupees, I don't think there has been a bank robbery in this country where 30, 40 crores of rupees has been uh, swindled or taken away. But if you talk of the cyber world, we have one with the Bank of uh, Bangladesh where uh, the, the, whole, the whole amount of money which was transferred was $91 million. And they were trying to get away with nearly $990 million. It was some, uh, uh, some, uh, some control in the SWIFT system that somehow they were able to, uh, the transaction does not happen. So cybercrime moves to a 
next level it is an exponential one you will be able to transact in a much more similar seamless manner you will be able to con the victim in a much more similar seamless manner this avatar at one point in time or from one dimension looks your persona there but that anonymity which blockchain provides that anonymity exists it might be your waist it might be your voice it might be your avatar but connecting crime to the criminal attribution as we call it in criminal investigation that attribution is not happening we had this uh, us presidential elections and that particular investigation it finally proved that i think there were 11 officers of gru unit in russia what happened nothing happened beyond that in uh, wonakarai or before that there is a one guy from north korea so finally it was found out oh it's some jim uh, jim hook or something after that nothing has happened and just to come to that level of attribution it takes nearly 4 years it, or it took 4 years to come uh, to find out whether whether this fellow was the culprit or not or to locate the culprit so tomorrow we might have super ransomware gangs so somebody takes control of the horizon world somebody takes control of the central land what will happen in sport we have absolutely no idea and that also in a world where to date data is not an asset class data today is also not an asset class when minimum of i think 5 trillion dollars of business is being done only out of data or after processing of data or after machine learning big data analytics and putting ai platforms on that particular data and we here in india and in most part of the world we pay to keep that data whereas they get bountiful profits out of that data so what is the missing link missing link is that technology missing link is that algorithm missing link is your capability to do data analytics and that missing link till the day you are not able to find you will not be able to graduate to the next level how successful we have been with ransomware gangs whether it is revel lockbed i can name any number of these ransomware gangs who are there known uh, we broadly know where they work from but uh, absolutely nothing we have been able to do against them there is a gang called revel which uh, government of united states said, said they wanted to be completely done away with they requested russia and 22nd of uh, january if i am not mistaken russia proclaimed that this gang has been dismantled five months down the line the same gang operated in indian oil regional headquarters in guwahati so this is where it is and it becomes more and more complex because governments will also get into this so today cyber crime cyber security uh, ransomware i think anything which you have been listening from morning till evening on a day in and day out day, day out basis if you and if you are into a bit or into the virtual criminal world is full of street actors and state actors work with non state actors metaverse will provide immense capability to get into further precision and drilling into the finer nitty gritty of those exercises in the very same manner as facebook and cambridge analytica were able to pinpoint every single voter as to what the person's inclination was and which way to tackle him the battle of mind i think that is the last battle and if the battle of mind is won by the criminal it can be a state actor non state actor it might be a military it might be an intelligence agency it might be a corporate enterprise the day they win the battle of the mind i think businesses will follow in a manner which is unimaginable and we will remain at their mercy for all times to come how much of criminality crimes investigation regulation enforcement we have been able to understand in web 2.0 web 2.0 i think the total conviction in this country might be a few hundred out of that most of it would be in your uh, ipc sections which which have been invoked with the it act section for as my understanding of last 22 years while dealing with all sorts of technology Uh, policing crime governance to blockchain literally anything and everything and now to metaverse we have lived in a digital jungle raj we are living in a digital jungle raj 
we have not been able to pass even a data protection act when privacy is a fundamental right i don't think there is any other fundamental right which is available to us which is not supported corroborated or enforced by a legal mandate by by a law of the land whether it is it whether it is crime whether it anything literally anything and is whether whether it is freedom to life and liberty whether it is of expression whether it is of association so we are in a digital jungle raj and what will happen as we move on to the metaverse or we are already moving into the metaverse i have absolutely no idea i've been just trying to air my points my view as to what things will be like as we move further if metaverse is a replication of the physical world what all crimes can happen so any crime which is happening here will happen there and beyond and and the worst part is that the crimes will be triggered from the metaverse the data will come out of the metaverse the connect will come out of the metaverse and it will be implemented on the ground today in all the conventional crimes and with firm conviction and very empirical objective data i can tell you that nearly 80 90% of the conventional crimes have a digital angle have a technology angle whether it is for the purposes of facilitating that crime or for the purposes of investigation because of the tell tale signs they leave in digital gadgets in servers and in variety of other things and the capability of the digital technology to stitch all these things together and give you a result so i don't think any conventional crime today literally any conventional crime today is being handled without technology so that is the reality of life when something is being handled without technology then then is very simple thing that the concerned investigative agency or whatever is that ecosystem there they are unaware of it so it can also happen that while you do policing on the one side policing by the police policing by the state and also policing by the it companies themselves your major chunk of crimes are left unattended and unlike the physical world it will never be known if a murder is not attended you will know but a murder is not attended in a naxalite area 300 kilometers inside their domain where there is hardly any policing you might never come to know it has also happened that police has requested that oh, this dead body you bring it to this place to the naxalite because there is absolutely no way out even in your uh, 911 investigation they have taken data from uh, data brokers so there are variety of things which happen but let it not become so complex that we are not in control of it and it, it it will remain under our control if from day one we are able to keep on improving our technical skills understanding the ecosystem improving our legal our legal framework creating our processes and making it well proven and robust as we proceed a social media Uh, information or data can be seized in the us but here this it is a different reality even that intermediaries uh, uh, regulations how much we are able to deliver i have absolutely no idea we have a law in uh, europe gdpr gdpr is up and functional i think from 25th of june uh, 2018 how much has it impacted the data ownership and the capability to misuse data or control the capability to misuse data finally what has happened is that there has been a legal notice or legal agreement being sent to all the users and every all user clicks and the reality after that remains the same value utility of data potency and potential will grow manifold if data today has x value in the metaverse with whatever is left of the other component of the virtual universe and the physical universe connect with that virtual universe and the meta and the metaverse that that data will literally be something you can treat it as a gold mine it will be a gold mine for whom it can be a gold mine for it companies for metaverse companies for governments for military agencies intelligence agencies it can be for anybody point is the way you use it the way you have access to it it can be a gold mine for the government also But the point is the way you use might be today there are governments in this world they have more data 
than uh, government data or privately available data in US. But the capability to use that data depends from geography to geography, both by way of innovation, creativity, criminal investigation, surveillance, control, all these tasks, which are the tasks of the state. So will, so will be its risk of misuse. So will it be the risk of misuse? Risk of misuse will be there. Risk of misuse is today also. Risk of misuse will be then as well. The issue is whether we will be in a position to locate that risk and to take care of that risk, to remedy that risk. So that, that remains a very, very cha big challenge. Until unless data is brought to a totally different pedestal, it becomes as your house, it becomes as your car, it becomes a property which nobody can touch. That is the time when data will really reach its worth. Otherwise, I keep battling out for my own data from morning till evening, which is in somebody else's control and being monetized in a mercenary manner day in and day out. I remember of a case of a, of a COVID facility in Bombay and somebody provided them a software and that software while uh, storing data there, it was also sending it to some other computer somewhere else. And the concerned gentleman, he, he, he tried to get a $250 million funding based on that data, which he claimed to be the best database on COVID-19 patient and also the capability. And that he also had the capability uh, with an AI tool to predict COVID treatment. So this is what data can do. And this is what people who are in the trade of misusing data can do. So all crimes would be related to data in some form or the other. It might be a physical crime, but it is related to data in some form or the other. You think of a situation wherein today there's a gun gunfire shot in a, in a wildlife sanctuary or in a tiger sanctuary. How do we get to know that? It is the physical thing is not possible there, given the nature of foliage, given the nature of uh, on lack of habitation. So we are trying to do it through gunfire shot triangulation. So all these new technologies will come, combination of technologies will come, protocols will come if we have to handle the metaverse. Anonymity would be an another great challenge, which is a challenge now. It will be a challenge then also, and it will be a much greater challenge. Now today, if you talk of today's banking or BFSI, Banking Financial Services and Insurance, I, I don't think uh, there, there would be anybody who either has not been impacted or been a victim of, of one of the virtual physical financial crimes, or he or she doesn't know a person who has been a victim of that. If you take the loan uh, apps today, I think that, that that has literally reached amongst the lower income group to a level which was unimaginable by the physical lending mechanism. So financial crimes will increase. It will increase in a manner unimaginable. The other concept of this financial crime is not only related to money being swindled. It is also intellectual property. It's also trademark. It's also patent. So they get into the systems. And when you have a digital twin and you are developing, say, a F-16 engine, and you have developed it, say, 70% uh, of the development has done, been done as far as the research part is concerned. And if somebody is able to hack and get away that digital twin, you can well understand uh, what gain does this fellow achieve, the person who has actually stolen the design, and that also in a post-simulation stage. And you can think what that victim has lost. It might be five years, 10 years of research and development, of bringing resources in a manner unimaginable, of having a vision and a dream of controlling the world through that particular project or that particular product, going through <laughs> the real process and going through the pains of this world. Think of a situation like this, a car like Tesla, somewhere 70, 80, 90% of the research and development is done and the whole thing is swindled off by somebody else. And it is not just data or some design. You are literally getting the whole process right on a silver platter. The physical injuries, and if you get into the put the financial crimes apart, when when there will be no physical crimes, as they say, 
even in that case of the gang rape which you we were talking about so somebody says no there is the nothing has happened physically but what is happening to that person i think that torture harassment uh, mental anxiety i don't think is anything less it might be more or exactly. how do we deal with the virtual reality physical crime now that the, the law has to move further then this social dystopia our disconnect with the normal physical social world increased with the social media increased with covid 19 forced digital transformation increased with every single uh, technical element which intruded into our lives they say 250 likes of uh, facebook the facebook can tell about your personality much better than your wife so that is or husband as the case may be so they have gone into systems they are able to tell that okay 5 se- 4 seconds if they delay a response what impact it will have on that human being so it is is just crazy the psychological past is just crazy and if you get into the whole I- isis recruitment process that is primarily based on social media and if the social media transform it into a metaverse if people are mad only on sending messages or getting some pictures unconnected videos what will it happen when you engage with somebody through your avatar day in and day out where we will reach if if it does not happen the way you want or you land it into a, a criminal scene and that criminal scene might be only psychological in nature but that will have the capability to take your life your loan apps have the capability to take your life and a variety of things which are happening in the virtual world can take your life or you will take your life yourself so psycho crimes mental trauma and the psychological breakdown so this is where we are we are not getting into the political fallout of it all of us know uh, us presidential elections 2016 we know brexit we know what cambridge analytica was trying to do all across the face of this earth we know that the best ai scientists were working with cambridge analytica so how much they can meddle in which manner we also know the dig- digital uh, marketing which goes for campaigning we also know the political strategies which we have in this country how much of democracy in which manner it is being dealt i think you also know i also know and that political fallout unfortunately unfortunately has a major social fallout and both the political and social fallout combined together have a major economic fallout so that is primarily meddling with anything and everything how do you investigate how will our capabilities grow manifold so if i ask a question from the audience as to today's capability of investing a complex cyber crime on a scale of 0 to 10 i don't know how much marks you will give but whatever marks you give i think that will be brought down can be normalized to 10% of the marks which you give as we grow further as we move further in the metaverse so how will our capabilities grow manifold it is a question of money it is a question of people who have the capability to teach you it is a it is a question of growing with this technology so it has always happened in the digital world in the cyber world that products have come before procedures application comes before the sop and there is no sop in this wide wide world in this public domain so if laws are not there before products are launched and billions of people become guinea pigs and the companies keep on improving and the gap between law and gap between a gap between the law being enacted and the technology or the product being pushed in i think to best of my understanding would not be less than 20 years so today we are trying to deal with the technology uh, the the maturity of the law for a technology of say 2002 in cyber security it said that if the if the hacker is in phase 5 the law is in phase 2 and even at a generic level it's told that we have a digital mindset no <laughs> we we have di- digital products and digital processes of the 21st century the institutions of the 20 20th century and the mindset of the 19th century so the, this is the struggle which is on the governments have not tried to bring us at speed 
Now, cloud technology is being taught in 11, 12 standard in uh, Singapore for ages. So we don't have procedures, we don't have the law, we don't have the mechanism, we don't have the SOPs. We are not true to ourselves, trying to bring a saner and a safer world. And unfinished products, it might be a finished product for Facebook, but for the world, for, but for our society, but for our ecosystem, it is not a finished product. So unfinished products are being pushed into the market, pushed on us, and we are supposed to face the music and the consequences of those products. And then we are supposed to complain to these people who have deliberately pushed in that unfinished product for them to improve. And we remain as guinea pigs. And somebody makes billions and billions of dollars, spoils our social system, economic system, variety of other things, and moves ahead. Cyber forensics to metaverse forensics. So this is where we intend to go. And cyber forensics then, or, or cyber forensics today, it is not the forensics of the postmortem. The whole world is using forensics for prediction, for prevention, for maintenance, for operations, for literally anything and everything. And it's high time that our scientists, they also realize that they cannot remain just an adjunct to the law enforcement world. They have a much bigger value. They have a much bigger responsibility. They have a much bigger capability to use forensics in the manner it should be. And I'm a great fan of forensics, though I don't come from the forensics background. Cyber forensics can do wonders. And as we move further, if, if people in the, in the forensic world decide, I think they can take over the forensics of metaverse because we have the time to learn and grow together. But if you make a lateral entry 10 years down the line, it will be extremely difficult to do anything or literally will not be able to do anything. And then again, as in the case of cyber forensics, in the real-time digital world, it has gone to the private companies. Same manner, again, it will go to the private companies. So there, it has to be a tectonic shift. It is a tectonic shift. Whether we transform ourselves into a totally different personal professional paradigm, that is the challenge which we face. So it will be a new world order. That is how we see. The question remains, Will it be a new world order? It will just be a whimper, a lecture from Sanjay Sai and a couple of products coming here and there and a couple of conferences. We still don't know because the inputs have to be huge. The work is huge. Creating a new universe of a different type, it, it, is, it is an endless world. So still a long way off for the technology to make it happen. And for the technology to make it happen, the effort has also to be there. And if the IT behemoths see, if they smell money, they will keep on doing it whether governments are in line or not in line, or the governments have to face the music as we move further, and the governments have to face music, the whole population faces music. So that is where we are. So it's, it's urging all our scientists who are listening to me that let's get into the act of getting future ready. We don't have a way out. Creating a new tech universe will not be easy. If the IT behemoths, they are able to do the uh, the metas of the world are ready to do the Googles are the world. Ready. And if we are left behind, that will not be a tech universe, which will be conducive to the present day nation state uh, designed society, economic um, economy and polity in which we live in. Thank you.